It's like, this stuff is really important. They don't teach this stuff, right? And it did something to me. Remember, I was an organic chemistry guy. I thought I was going to be on that road. I switched roads. Follow me here. Now I'm doing sociology. And as I'm pouring into this idea of networking, I start to realize that there are young people who don't understand this concept as good as they should. Next thing happens. Fast forward. I end up going and working in administration at Princeton University on my on my off time, so nine to five, so five to nine, I develop a program called Profound Ivy where we talk about networking, helping young people make their transition to the real world. We go into it for three years, three years, all in it, all in it, and I love it. I get to speak like this, but instead of 700, it's like 30 people, but we're in it, right? And I'm following my passion. Everybody repeat after me, follow your passion. Everybody say it like you're passionate, follow your passion. Right? And I'm following my passion. I'm in it. I'm not thinking about anything else. Three years pass by, and I'm doing it with one of my best friends, and we're rocking, right? We're like, this information is great. Cats are coming up to me and saying, yo, I landed the dream job of my life because of the networking tree and the principles that you've taught. I'm like, oh my God, we have some, we have something here. Two years pass by, and I say, you know what? I'm going to write a book about it, not because I think I'm a great writer, but because I think this information needs to be heard. How to Network in College comes out in, in the 2016, December 2016, right? How to network in college, helping college students successfully navigate through their undergraduate and graduate years. I become a best selling author. I don't say this to impress you, I'm trying to impress something upon you guys. My adversity, if I didn't absolutely bomb that organic chemistry test, like, like, hear me, because some of you right now are in situations where you're bombing something. Something is hitting you in the head right now. You're absolutely failing. You're trying to figure out what's going on. But you're being redirected. You're being, you're being repositioned for your passion, and you have no idea. I'm talking about the power of perspective. Everybody repeat after me. The power of perspective. Understand that when adversity hits you, oftentimes it's trying to teach you, but your perspective has to be great on it. If I were to say, oh my God, I got killed by organic chemistry, I'm an absolute failure, I wouldn't be standing before you today. Hear me. Hear me. I want to sit on this because I'm not talking to everybody, but I'm talking to somebody. Like you're in something right now and something is hitting you in the head and you're like, man, life is hard. Like I can't get everything together. Like I don't know what's going on in my life. I'm trying to put two pieces together. I just want to look like everyone else. I want to look like everyone else. Everyone else is going like this, zoom, zoom, zoom. I got friends who are passing me by, but for whatever reason, I'm sitting here and I'm sitting in failure. And I'm, I'm, I'm talking to you, not all y'all, you. Your failure is your teacher. Your failure is your teacher. If you look at it with the right perspective and the right eyes, I promise you, I promise you, As real as I'm standing on this stage today, I promise you that oftentimes life puts us in a position so that we can absolutely be hit in the head, so that we can redirect ourselves and know which way we're supposed to go. If you feel me, say, yeah. Yeah. If somebody in the back feels me, say, oh, yeah. yeah. Right? I want to sit on that for two seconds. Like someone who's like failing. Like it looks like failure, like it feels like failure. You're not failing. Your perspective is off. I swear to you, I thought I was failing. I had no idea that that book would allow me to become the speaker that I needed to be to now literally reach over 30,000 students and be afforded the opportunity to share my story like this. I'm no one special, but what I do know is that now I look at situations differently. So when failure comes my way, I say, I got you. I know what you're doing. I get you. I get you. If if someone gets me, say, yeah. Yeah. If someone gets me, say, oh, yeah. yeah. My last point. This is my last point. So my first point was, in order to make your mark, Sacramento, you have to create your what? your mission statement. My second point, 
In order to make your mark, some of you are going through, you're on the journey of becoming, and you have to look at adversity with a new perspective. Right? Last but not least, everybody repeat after me, and I wanted this to be practical. Everybody say fear. Fear. Mm. Mm. One more time, everybody say fear. Fear. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. That's deep. Yeah. Yeah. By a show of hands, how many of you guys have experienced fear? I need the elbow to lock. (laughs) So here's what fear does. So, So fear is restrictive. Fear stops us from taking the steps that we need to take to become the best version of ourselves. Fear is the thing that's literally holding you back from doing the thing that you're supposed to do. Fear is stopping you from becoming the leader that you're supposed to be now. One of the things that I've learned in my past is that leadership is not a title. Leadership is an action. Leadership is not the title that you have. You can clap for that because let's go. I'll stay here. Leadership is not a title. Leadership is an action. Leadership is not a noun. Leadership is a verb. Leadership is not what you look like or where you are. Leadership is the way in which you interact and how you treat the people around you. I'm trying to tell you something, people. Leadership is each and every one of you right now are a leader right now. Young professionals, unemployed, if you don't know what's going on, you're a leader just by the way in which you operate. I'm being honest. Many of us are stuck and stagnant in situations because we believe that we need someone to give us the card to initiate what we're supposed to do. Like someone here is supposed to start that podcast. (laughs) Someone here is supposed to write that article. Someone here is supposed to have that difficult conversation with the people in their lives. Someone here is supposed to create that new relationship. Someone here is supposed to get off Netflix Someone here is supposed to stop. Listen to me. I'm being honest. This is just from experience. Someone here is literally supposed to absolutely put their time and their effort in something new. Like right now, you're talking about work-life balance. I'm telling you right now as a young professional, that kind of doesn't exist. Like someone here right now is supposed to focus on their dream and their goals and their aspirations. The question that I ask myself every time that I speak, I don't look at this as a keynote. I look at this as an assignment. The thing that I ask myself, the thing that I ask myself is if I don't operate in my faith and instead operate in my fear, if I don't chase my dreams and become the person that I'm supposed to be, who loses out? Who loses out? It's no longer about me. I remember the first time I gave a speech and my, and my niece was to the left of me and we finished and she walked up to me and she said, I was like, what? I said, like, I can't hear you. And she spoke up and she looked at me and she said, I'm going to give a TED talk too. <laughs> right? I can't tell you how much that motivated me. I realized that I wasn't doing this for me. Like, every time I do something, it's not just for me. There are people who are watching you right now in your journey, and you're inspiring them just by the way in which you move. There are people literally right now who are watching you, who are waiting for you to move in the right way. How many of you people know people who are younger than you who are watching your move? We got to move for them. We have to make our mark for them. And we talk about making our mark. We're not talking about a line in the sand. We're talking about a rock, an inscription in a rock. What's the difference? The difference is a line in the sand can be pushed over at any time. Many times when people come to a conference like this, you get the energy, and then you don't do the thing that you're supposed to do. Next Thursday, it gets lost. Right? The energy is gone. But when you, make a, when you take a rock and you inscript it in a rock, how long is that going to be there? Everybody say forever. Ah, say it like you mean it. Everybody say forever. forever. Everybody say, I'm going to make my mark. Forever. 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 That's the message that I want to leave with you. It's not just about us. Don't let fear hold you back. Ever. I don't care what aspect of life you're in. People are in different situations. Never let fear hold you back. Never let fear hold you back. You don't know who's counting on you. If you feel that, say, yeah. Yeah. 
If you feel that, say, oh, yeah. yeah. Sacramento, if you're ready to make your mark, say, oh, yeah. yeah. Can you give it up for your own dreams? Say, oh, yeah. yeah. Come on now. Make some noise for your own dreams. Okay. To end together, you guys have been absolutely incredible. Um, before I end, I just want to say this. Whew, uh, I want to say this part. Um, you guys, this is my dream. And uh, it's crazy because you guys are in it right now. And uh, <laughs> I just want to say thank you for the bottom of my heart. Um, I believe in you. And, and if you ever remember me, just remember a form of mind, inspired a heart. Thank you guys. Yeah.